How do you destroy a bunker made of concrete, buried 50 feet underground, especially when it's never been done before? But that was a challenge for the U.S. Air Force during Operation Desert Storm, as Iraqis' intelligence and command personnel were stationed inside concrete bunkers so deep underground that the U.S. had no weapon to penetrate them. But in an unbelievable feat of ingenuity, engineering, and cooperation, the U.S. military designed, manufactured, and successfully deployed a weapon in less than four weeks, which left enemy with no option but to surrender. Known as bunker busters, these bombs penetrate deep into the earth or right through a dozen feet of reinforced concrete before exploding. These bombs have made it possible to reach and destroy facilities that would have been impossible to attack. Its casing consists of an approximately 5-meter section of artillery barrel that is 14.5 inches in diameter. Artillery barrels are made of extremely strong hardened steel so that they can withstand the repeated blasts of artillery shells when they are fired. Inside this steel casing is nearly 650 pounds of tritonal explosive. Tritonal is a mixture of 80% TNT and 20% aluminum powder. The aluminum improves the brescence of the TNT, the speed at which the explosive develops its maximum pressure. The addition of aluminum makes tritonal about 18% more powerful than TNT alone. Attached to the front of the barrel is a laser guidance assembly. Either a spotter on the ground or in the bomber illuminates the target with a laser, and the bomb homes in on the illuminated spot. The guidance assembly steers the bomb with fins that are part of the assembly. The finished bomb, known as the GBU-28 or the BLU-113, is 19 feet long, 14.5 inches in diameter, and weighs 4,400 pounds. In tests, the GBU-28 has penetrated 100 feet of earth or 20 feet of concrete. Bunker busters work for a few simple reasons. They are encased in a rigid tube, are extremely heavy, narrow, and are dropped from high in the air. Given that they are covered in highly hardened steel, the bombs can withstand and pierce through the Earth's surface. It is fundamental physics. Once the giant bomb is dropped from the plane, it develops a significant amount of speed, building up kinetic energy as it falls all the way down. Once it hits the ground, it impales straight through the surface. Typically, there needs to be a delay before the bomb goes off. This is done by using a delay fuse or a hard target smart fuse so that the bomb doesn't blow up before it hits its intended target. Many of you may be asking, how deep can a bunker buster go? These are incredibly heavy bombs with narrow points. Not only that, but they are also dropped from a predetermined height of around 20,000 feet in the sky. Given its immense weight, smaller military-grade aircraft, such as the F-15 Eagle, can only carry one at a time. To combat this, a smaller twin bomb known as the Blue 109 Bunker Buster Bomb is used for the same purpose. However, it is not even half the size of the GBU-28, only weighing up to 2,000 pounds, making it easier to carry. Can Iran stop U.S. bunker buster bombs? Iran has been conducting much of its suspected nuclear weapons work for years in underground labs and research facilities thought to be able to survive attacks by earlier generations of U.S. military bunker busters. So the Defense Department has spent just as much time procuring a bigger punch. In October 2014, the Air Force successfully completed one weapon drop from the B-2 aircraft on a representative target. The test, conducted at the White Sands Missile Range, demonstrated weapon behavior after planned enhancements were incorporated. 
The $15 million GBU-57 massive ordnance penetrator weighs in at about 30,000 pounds, six times the heft of the existing GBU-28 bunker busters and nearly five tons heavier than the GBU-43, once known as the mother of all bombs. The Pentagon has spent more than $300 million for 20 of GBU-57. Guided to its destination by GPS-guided lattice-type fins, the GBU-57's alloy steel hull designed to remain intact as it drills through rock or reinforced concrete before setting off its 5,300-pound warhead. Air Force officials have said it represents a bridge capability between existing bunker busters and nuclear weapons themselves. After several upgrades, the Air Force has let it be known that there's an operational stockpile of the world's most powerful non-nuclear bombs at Whiteman Air Force Base. They're not far from the B-2 bombers now ready to carry them 7,000 miles to Iran.